remain standing for the prayers from Rabbi Aaron Goldstein from the Ark Synagogue. As ever, you're not going to get a prayer from me. Um, rather, just a thought. We were discussing earlier why I get invited every January. We assume it's because of Holocaust Memorial Day, although it could be for the New Year for trees. It's a real thing, uh, but it's a very minor festival. I don't, we might be here on environmental grounds, but uh, I don't think that's the reason either. But I'd prefer to celebrate my being here celebrate me being here as Jews have been in this country celebrating being British citizens for so long. I reminded myself as I flew out of Israel on my second trip recently why in 1988 I sat there and made the decision that I was a British Jew not an Israeli and I came back to live my life in this country. I'm reminded every time that I hold my grandfather's prayer book that he was given on his bar mitzvah on July the 11th, 1936 on the, at the Finchley District Synagogue. I'm reminded each time that I pick up the prayers which Jews carried with them when they went and served in the armed forces throughout the wars. And as Colonel A.E. Goldschmidt in 1902 said, Loyalty to the flag for which the sun once stood still can only deepen our devotion to the flag on which the sun never sets. So today I celebrate being a British Jew, able to open your considerations this evening. And just to end with the thought that our most important prayer and blessing within our tradition start simply with the words Shema, which means listen. And I hope that you're all able to listen to each other with dignity and respect as I've always been treated in this country. And long may it continue. Please be seated. Good evening. A very warm welcome to this evening's uh, London Board of Lingdon Council meeting and those who are watching us on YouTube. <coughs> Let's start with the agenda item on the order paper one. Apologies for absence. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I have apologies for absence from councillors Abby, Bennett, Chapman, Money and Riley. Thank you. Item two, minutes to receive the minutes of the meeting of the council held on 30th November 2023. Are they agreed? Thank you very much. Item three, declarations of interest. Is there any declaration of interest? None. Thank you very much. Item four, May's announcements. <coughs> Over the past six weeks, we have continued to accept many invitations and represent our communities, businesses, and groups across the borough with great passion and absolute joy. Although Christmas has passed, I have to give you a report, so please bear with me. As a diverse community, we all cherish and celebrate Christmas festivities. It is time to be kind, generous, and considerate to families, friends, and fellow human beings. Several Christmas events were organized in the borough. Christmas memorial service brought great community togetherness at St. Paul's Church. Residents living with dementia were shown multiple Christmas segments of care and kindness in their festive celebrations. Community Connects Panto was excellent for a joyous afternoon with friends with learning disabilities. <clears throat> Carols on the Green with Usley and West Drayton Band was a stunning community meetup evening with lots of singing, 
the warmth of mulled wine for many and donations to the Mayor's charity. STEM light up Christmas cards at the library in Hayes was an actual demonstration of our youngsters' vision and beautiful ideas to be part of the celebrations. Well done to the library staff and the assistant manager for supporting and facilitating the children. Last but no least, the Christmas quiz and raffle straight a beautiful afternoon in committee room six. Thank you to all officers for participating and raising 400 pounds for the mayor's charity. We are all proud of our young people, their dedication to learning and supporting local communities by volunteering is so commendable. It was great to attend Brunel University's READY program. It stands for reach every ambition for developing yourself. The challenge is to design in a team or product or a service to solve real life problems faced by people living in the Mayukwe Yukwa refugee settlement in Zambia. To explore innovative ideas and create solutions to benefit a refugee community. I also attended an opening ceremony in the Civic Center for a large piece of artwork our young people have worked on for the past few months. I was told it was supposedly the lowest mood day of the year, but unveiling the artwork uplifted everybody's mood. Thank you to Roy, Nick, the entire team, and the parents for supporting and encouraging these kids. Diversity and inclusion are essential for fostering innovation, creativity, and a positive work environment. Embracing different perspectives and backgrounds leads to a more prosperous and dynamic society. New Year's Day Parade in Westminster, London's International Choral Festival at Cadogan Hall, and Friday Parades at various locations were the events that showed the action accurate picture of a rich mixture of cultures, traditions, and religions. Parallel visits by various groups, community members, and local professionals have been welcomed as usual. An author of the Effort Bank book, local entrepreneur and motivational speaker visited. He is keen to help the community train and recruit young people in Hillingdon. The manager of CTEC Plus visits to discuss and explore the opportunities and how they can help the community in employability. Schools and youth visits to the parlor were an opportunity for youth to learn about some exciting masterpieces of history and tour to the chamber to get a flavor of how the council's business works. Hillingdon Interfaith Group visited the parlor to discuss the plans for the Mayor's Interfaith Civic Service held in April. I'm looking forward to Mayor's sponsored Whittington Walk, flies on the desk at the back, and please donate if you can. All proceeds to Mayor's Charitable Trust 2023-2024. I will be hosting afternoon tea for all charities and associations of which the Mayor of Hillingdon is honorary chairman or president. Volunteers being sought to run the Hillingdon 20 on behalf of the Mayor's Charitable Trust. So get your running shoes on, or if you know any keen runners, you might want to take part, please encourage them to contact the Mayor's office. Again, I thank the mayoress, my daughter Tuba Vulana, for her dedication, giving back to the community and continued support. That's all from me. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Moving on to agenda five, report of the head of democratic services, Councillor Edwards, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I move the recommendation at 5.1 which is for Council to approve the meetings for the forthcoming municipal year on page 14, and also to give delegated authority as outlined for any subsequent amendments that may be required. I so move. Is that seconded by Councillor Bianco? Uh, I second, Madam, uh, Mr. Mayor. 
Are there any other speakers? Is that agreed? Thank you. In item six, council tax base and business rates forecast 24-25. Uh, Mr. Mayor, just before calling on Councillor Goddard, can I just uh, ensure that all members realise that on page 20 of the report there is a typo whereby the years indicated should be 24-25. Thank you, Lloyd. Councillor Goddard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members will be aware that this item represents Hillingdon's compliance with a routine statutory obligation to present a calculation of its council tax base. <coughs> Excuse me as it stood at the 30th of November 2023, and to provide a forecast of business rates income for the financial year 24-25. This obligation needs to be complied with by the 31st of January 2024. The manner in which the council tax base is calculated and reported is in terms of band D equivalent properties. I can report that the so calculated number of band D equivalent properties in Hillingdon at the 30th of November 2023 amounts to 104,668 and that this represents an increase of 1,043 additional properties over the equivalent level as reported in 23-24. Whilst we've seen a slower growth rate in terms of new properties, no doubt driven by the difficult financial environment, a reduction in the number of residents availing themselves of the council tax reduction scheme and a pleasing improvement in our council tax collection rate has driven the so reported growth. Our forecast of business rates income for 24-25 indicates a gross yield of 382,844,000, of which, regrettably, Hillingdon is permitted to retain a mere 68,276,000. This, however, represents a 7.6 million pound increase on the 23-24 levels, largely as a result of the reflection of the revaluation which was carried out in 23-24. Both the council tax base and the business rates forecast comprise an integral part of the consultation budget which was circulated in December 2023. I therefore move recommendations A to D set out on page 15 of item 6 of this evening's order of business. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Is that seconded by Councillor Edwards? Seconded, Councillor Mayor. Thank you. Any other speakers? Is that agreed? Thank you. Moving on to agenda item seven, members' questions. Question number 7.1, Councillor Rita Chemdal. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Can the Cabinet member update Council on how has Hillingdon Adult Social Care reacted to hospital discharges during the doctor's strike? Thank you. Councillor Palmer. Thank you, Mr Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Chamdale, for your question. The recent junior doctor's industrial action from January the 3rd to the 9th this year came at one of the busiest times of the year for adult social care and, indeed, Hillingdon Hospital. Adult social care have a very good working relationship with all of the partners that are involved in supporting discharge from hospital and the integrated discharge teams align closely with adult social care to ensure that patients with social care needs are safely discharged in a timely way, freeing up beds for any other Hillingdon residents that may need them. In anticipation of the strike, the adult social care team actively participated in Northwest London meetings to prepare, collaborating closely with healthcare professionals and other stakeholders to strategize for the anticipated disruptions in the healthcare sector. To facilitate a coordinated effort, the team engaged in multi-agency discharge events at Hillingdon Hospital. These events aim to streamline the discharge process and contribute to the creation of additional bed capacity by maintaining a steady and safe flow of discharges for Hillingdon residents. One of the key accomplishments during this period was the commitment to confirming discharges on the same day for all Hillingdon residents, whether they were admitted to our local Hillingdon hospital or 
located in out-of-borough hospitals. Upon receiving referrals, the team ensured that individuals were discharged promptly and returned home with the necessary support tailored to meet their social care needs. During the weeks 18th of December to 10th of January, the council supported 168 people to leave hospital and get their care in the community. That's a great figure. In addition to the localised efforts throughout the strikes, Hillingdon Adult Social Care actively participated in daily North West London meetings. These gatherings brought together representatives from all North West London local authorities and trusts, fostering collaboration and information exchange during the challenging circumstances presented by the industrial action. Hillingdon's involvement in these discussions reflects the commitment to a regional approach to healthcare challenges, emphasising the importance of a united front in addressing issues related to patient care, especially during the periods of heightened strain on the healthcare system, with the focus always being on the support to residents by adult social care. Throughout the year, many factors contribute to pressures in the healthcare system, such as Christmas, Easter, bank holidays, extreme weather, and seasonal illnesses. And adult social care have plans in place on how they deal with this. I am proud to report that adult social care teams demonstrated resilience, adapti adaptability even, and effective partnership working during the doctor's strike, ensuring that the well-being and care of residents remained a top priority throughout this challenging period. I would like to personally thank the staff and managers for making this possible. Absolutely fantastic work. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Palmer. Councillor Rita Shamler, do you have a supplementary question? No, thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Moving on to question number 7.2. Councillor Burles. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Does the Cabinet member regret not holding a full and proper consultation with residents over the proposed relocation of Uxbridge Library to the Civic Centre? Thank you. Councillor Lavery. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor, and thank you to Councillor Burles for your question. I was tempted to give you a very short answer to your question, having extensively discussed this matter at the last Council meeting, but I will resist that tonight. I would remind Council that a formal public consultation is not required. <coughs> it's required only when a library is to be closed, <coughs> not relocated within the same town centre. Indeed, it's not the first time that a library relocation has happened in this borough, with other examples in Ricelet Manor, Hayes, and of course Uxbridge itself on a much earlier occasion. A public engagement exercise began on the 10th of November, giving residents online and those visiting Uxbridge Library the opportunity to see the proposals. Frequently asked questions were also provided to inform residents of the proposed changes and an email address provided for residents to give their views. The deadline uh, for this engagement um, expires shortly on the 19th of January. In this time, approximately 6,000 active users of Uxbridge Library i.e. those who have used the library in the last 12 months were contacted by email where their email address is known. Posters have been placed in other Hillingdon libraries uh, to make other users of other libraries aware. We have taken advice from the Department of Culture, Media and Sport as to the extent that consultation is required. Should the Cabinet approve the proposal, um, it, is, it does require planning permission and the standard statutory planning consultation will also be carried out. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lavery. Councillor Burns, do you have a supplementary question? Thank you, Mr Mayor. And thanks to the Cabinet Member for the reply. Please can he let me know how are they going to consult with the bypassed minority groups that use the library, of which there are many, and they're not all on email? And also, why not a word about the proposed move has been printed in the last two editions, of the, at least the last two editions, of the Hillingdon people? Thank you. Councillor Leary. I think I've already given a detailed answer of the consultation process we've undertaken and the ability for all groups to use the library to participate. Thank you. 
Thank you. Question number 7.3 on the order paper. Councillor Cawthorn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Would the Cabinet member please advise Council of the veracity of recent media reporting, specifically that of GB News, regarding the state of London Borough of Hillingdon's finances? Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Goodhart. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Cawthorn, for your question. For the benefit of members who are not regular viewers of GB News, and I imagine there might be a few of them in this chamber this evening, I can advise that a report by a correspondent listed a number of local authorities who he stated had filed for bankruptcy, and indeed went on to include Hillingdon within that list. Mr. Mayor, a state of bankruptcy for local authorities is deemed to exist under the provisions of the Local Government Act 1988 when a council finance officer issues what is referred to as a section 114 notice, indicating that the authority is about to incur expenditure, which is deemed to be unlawful according to the aforementioned act. The primary reason why expenditure is held to be unlawful is if such expenditure will exceed income for the particular financial year. Mr. Mayor, members can be assured that no such section 114 notice has been issued at Hillingdon. And indeed, members will also be aware that the current consultation budget for 2024-25 is satisfactory balanced, and therefore circumstances do not exist whereby a section 114 notice would be required. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It therefore follows that the GB News report was inaccurate in its reference to Hillingdon. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Thank you Councillor Goddard. Councillor Cawthon, do you have a supplementary question? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No supplementary. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to question on the order of paper, 7.4. Councillor Mathers. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can the leader explain the delays in a payment to a special needs school, which has been outstanding for a considerable amount of time, especially when this administration claims to have sound financial management? Thank you. Councillor Edwards, the leader. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, and thank, thank you, Councillor Mathers, for your question. A new payment system was implemented in September 2001 that delayed reconciliation of some claims, particularly those from special schools with funding arrangements are considerably more complex than usual owing to the different levels of funding paid according to need. The Council continues to be in discussion with one special needs school over elements of claims submitted by the school that cannot be reconciled with the evidence that we hold. This is in the context of 959 payment claims having been submitted by 54 special needs providers in 2022-23. Ensuring the validity of claims prior to payment is a necessary element of sound financial management and our finance officers have my full backing in acting diligently to prevent inappropriate payments being made. The school to which I believe Councillor Mathers is alluding claims it is owed some £250,000 over and above the amounts already paid. This sum does not relate to a single claim, but is an aggregation of elements from multiple claims over a number of payment periods. Officers have met with the school three times since September alone and are in regular contact by email to try and resolve this matter. The school, has agreed to, uh, the school has agreed to look again at their claim given the information that the council has provided and we wait the outcome of their review. If the school is able to provide the evidence to substantiate the outstanding sums, the finance team will work at pace to make payment. Thank you. Thank you, Leader. Councillor Mayors, do you have a supplementary question? Thank you. Moving on to question number 7.6. Councillor Smallwood. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, can the Cabinet member update Council on the progress of the proposed Usley housing scheme and its contribution to affordable housing targets? Thank you. Councillor Lavery. <coughs> uh, thank you, Mr Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Smallwood, for your question. I was delighted that the Planning Committee at its December meeting granted approval for the development in Pauling Lane, um, Otterfield Road in Usley. 
In summary, this is a high quality development in a brownfield location delivering 100% affordable housing on the site. 100% affordable housing. The 95 units have a mix of sizes, including 19 three bedroom units, a, a strong contribution to our need for larger units. For those who are not familiar with our development plan, the development plan requirement is that 50% of new homes on public sector land are affordable whereas we have provided 100% on this site. This has been achieved without using any of the recreation grounds designated as metropolitan open land and ensuring the existing designation is maintained. By way of background, the demand for affordable housing is a significant issue in Hillingdon, as it is in all areas of London, where property prices are high and private sector rents are higher than other parts of the country. We need some 950 properties a year available to homeless families to prevent their placement into temporary accommodation. By the end of March 2024, we forecast there will be some 1,200 homeless households living in temporary accommodation. And we are modelling a need in the order of some 1,100 pro additional properties a year through a variety of routes to meet our housing demand. Given all of these facts, I was rather astounded that Councillor Punja was opposing the development to create 95 affordable units. Somewhat surprising for a Labour councillor, but here we go. Her frequent Twitter posts also make reference to residents being unable to open their windows due to poor air quality. I've investigated the air quality information and I can categorically state this is untrue. As you will be aware, the council has a suite of air quality monitoring locations across the borough and three in Usley. We are below the limits for all the principal participants, uh, uh, particulates, yeah, thank you, and including the one for particulate 2.5, where we are below the 2030 figure already. Whilst we will continue uh, to do work on air quality, I think residents can be assured uh, that this is somewhat scaremongering on the part of others. I did listen with interest to the planning committee comments and the detailed debate that took place, but was rather taken when Councillor Gaelic was actually trying to persuade committee that the um, development should have less affordable homes in it. <laughs> rather, given the amount of correspondence I get from on, on councils on social housing matters, I was astounded that a Labour councillor was choosing to argue against building affordable properties, but there we go. I think the message you could take from this is that this Conservative administration <laughs> will deliver affordable housing for its residents. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Avery. Councillor Smallwood, do you have a supplementary I question? I do, Mr Mayor, and can I thank the Cabinet Member for that very insightful answer. Um, could you tell me what the impact will be on the Usley Recreation Ground? Councillor Avery. Uh, thank you, Councillor Smallwood. The Usley Recreation Ground, of which there was much scaremongering in the run-up to this um, application being presented, and indeed I, I saw signs saying, save your recreation ground as part of the campaign <coughs> against it. I can advise Council, the uh, scheme includes uh, a new family landscape garden on the form of bowling green, a new playground area, increased tree planting, uh, additional footpaths to give access to the site, um, upgrading of ramps <coughs> and upgrading of access from the Fairfield Road car park. And importantly, this is not a contribution to be delivered at some time in the future. This will be the first part of this development. So the improvements yeah. to recreation ground come first. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moving on to question number 7.5 on the order paper. Councillor Curling. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is the Leader of the Council as amazed as me to discover that the cost of the 2022 Freedom of the Borough celebratory meal at the Battle of Britain Bunker Visitor Centre cost a staggering £15,277.58, of which catering costs alone was £13,640. This is compared to £7,000 for the catering of a similar event in 2018. From members' inquiries and a residents' freedom of information request, 
it appears that no estimates were sought for the 2022 event and an assumption was made that the catering costs would be in the region of £7,000 as it was in 2018. Why was this allowed to happen and why was there effectively a blank cheque of public money allocated to this event? Thank you. Councillor Edwards, the leader. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Curling, for your question. And in short, no, I am not amazed, because the ceremonies that you refer to, uh, as you know, were entirely different. It seems that Councillor Curling needs to be reminded that it was he that seconded the motion which proposed that, exceptionally, that the Freedom Awards were to be conferred on Sir Ray and Jean Palmer at a civic dinner held in their honour, and so his comparison with the 2018 award is inappropriate and wholly misleading. Councillor Curling does not state whose assumption he is referring to, that the catering costs for the dinner would be in the region of £7,000. It was not mine, as it would be naive in the extreme to believe that a civic dinner at the Battle of Britain Visitor Centre could be delivered in 2022 for the same costs as a finger buffet in a committee room in 2018. <laughs> I am asked for explanation of why this additional money was spent. So let me remind Council of why I believe our going the extra mile in honouring Sir Ray and Jean was appropriate. In 2006, when Sir Ray first led a Conservative majority administration, Hillingdon had only the 13th lowest council tax rate in outer London. When Sir Ray left office, we had the second lowest council tax rate in outer London, yeah, yeah. a position we retain today. Had Sir Ray permitted council tax to increase by the average of outer London boroughs, our Bandy household will now be paying £173 each every year now than they are now. This means that through Sir Ray's careful stewardship of this budget, of this um, borough, close to £18 million pounds a year, £18 million pounds a year, is being left in the pockets of Hillingdon's residents yeah, yeah. each and every year. Yeah, yeah. And that is owing to Hillingdon Conservatives' sound financial management. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir Ray was not afraid to fight on behalf of residents, challenging the government on the third runway and high speed too. And time has proven him right in both cases. I won't antagonise the opposition by going into detail about our roads, libraries, parks, green spaces, green flags, playgrounds, leisure centre, outdoor gyms nor our support for old residents or the many services that others look on in envy, all ensured by Sir Ray's leadership and delivered by Jean Palmer. But I do want to single out the preservation for future generations of the bunker at RAF Uxbridge and its opening up with the visitor centre to present generations. This required passion, vision and drive to achieve and enabled us now to better appreciate the contribution that the few made in securing our freedoms during the Battle of Britain, aided by our allies in the Polish Air Force, particularly those stationed at RAF Northolt. It is a legacy of national, no international importance, secured by Sir Ray and delivered by Jean Palmer. It is entirely <coughs> fitting that it was the setting of the award ceremony and the civic dinner. <coughs> Since that dinner, there has been adequate opportunity before now. Ten council meetings, in fact, not counting tonight, for Councillor Curling or any other councillor to have raised concern about the event, but nothing has been said, presumably because members believe that the civic dinner, its location and level of hospitality, was not inappropriate nor not merited. This means that the only issue here is the error by officers in presuming that the contract awarded to the company that provides catering to mayoral functions 
extended to the special event. It did not, quotes should have been obtained, and officers have taken this learning on board. 